this condition that you will never see. And I'm sitting in the audience going, that's what I see all day long, because they call these rare. If you start looking at your patients, how many of you, now that you think about it, have seen this on the skin of your patients? You know, you see they have like this fishnet-like pattern. You don't know what it is, you don't know what to do about it. Okay, what these people have is called levitoreticularis. They can get red, violet, or blue skin surrounding areas of normal skin. It's aggravated by cold, it disappears with warming, and it's due to atherosclerotic emboli, which shower the dermal vessels. If you see this, then you start looking at clotting disorders and immune system disorders in that patient. They could still have dystrophy, but at least they're telling you reasons they're predisposed to it or why it's not getting better. Likewise, they may have a coagulopathy. This is a patient referred for RSD that had, in fact, a, po a positive duplex. They had um, reflux and thrombosis. You might find a D-dimer on their laboratory, but they'll present with vasomotor instability, cold sensitivity, hyperpathia, and dysesthesias. Peripheral arterial disease can present as a cold, painful limb. Activity will increase their pain. They can have trophic skin and nail changes. But if you do vascular plethysmography studies, you'll clearly see reduced AVIs or abnormal stress exams. If you do vascular arterial or venous duplexes, you can look for narrowing of the arteries. Radiation fibrosis is another RSD lookalike. They have lymphedema, they have allodynia, they have trophic changes. Electrodiagnostic studies can show brachial plexopathies or other evidence of radiation neurogenic disease. I'm a big believer that, in fact, the best test for thoracic outlet sy syndrome is thermographic imaging, and that is, in fact, a C-fiber, sympathetically maintained disease in 90% of the cases, but it's not dystrophy. They complain of decreased skin temperature, they have ulnar paresthesias, they can have cyanosis and venous engorgement, they have a positive adsense or military maneuver on physical exam. There's so many musculoskeletal issues besides this and occluded artery. It could be a strained acromioclavicular ligament causing the scapulothoracic joint to downshift and tugging on the thoracic outlet. It can be from scaling amphicus. There's at least 15 different musculoskeletal conditions that can generate a thoracic outlet syndrome. In this particular case, we performed the musculoskeletal ultrasound. This is the AC joint and you can see clear thinning of the AC ligaments across the joint. What about vasomotor and sinus headaches? We don't call them dystrophy, but we all know that it's C-fiber mediated. We all know it goes through the superior sympathetic cervical ganglion. Okay, and these patients, they come in with cluster headaches. They come in um, and take triptans, which of course are affecting blood flow. We might want to do transcranial Doppler with breath holding indexes and stress challenge chest to look to see what's going on in the circle of Willis. So for the conclusion of my first talk, uh, I hope to have reviewed with you what RSD is, what RSD isn't, and our my next talk that I give, we'll talk about thermal imaging and how to diagnose RSD. Thank you.